my name is Aditi Suri. I'm a senior researcher at the Indian Institute for Human Settlements based in Bangalore. At IHS, I lead research, government advisory, and teaching around technology and employment. And IHS broadly is a national educational institution that uh, is focused on creating equitable urban futures uh, for Indian cities and cities in the global south as the global south rapidly urbanizes. Our starting point for this research was that um, India has a huge demographic dividend, right? So we have lots of young people who are entering education and entering the labor market, um, but we don't see this translating into more women working in our economy. Uh, or either as workers or as enterprise owners. Um, and this has been a historic trend that we have seen, but it's gotten even worse with the pandemic. Are women you know, too busy being educated right now to be in the labor market? Are there social and cultural mores that they aren't being able to traverse to become workers? Or is it that they're getting educated in fields where jobs don't exist? We wanted to look at whether the platform economy or the digital economy can offer different working conditions or something different that can encourage female uh, labor force participation to increase. There was a really strong, powerful moral universe around gender neutrality that got created um, around some of these service sectors, which prevented people from actually capturing gender disaggregated data or using that in their um, business um, to make certain kinds of business cases to encourage more women or to see women in the particularities of their lives. So for certain companies uh, that were really well-established gig economy companies, especially in mobility, we found that they were only willing to look at women as kind of um, social causes and not as business cases. There was a lot of work that companies were willing to do, but only as part of their corporate social responsibility or from their foundation wings, right? Not as part of the central business. Um, but there were companies uh, such as in, in, in like, say, the social commerce sector, which is quite particular, I think, to the global south, where companies actually stated that women were better economic participants, they were more stable, they returned as users and as customers more. So companies were able, uh, were actually able to create more predictability of their businesses when um, they found there were more uh, female economic participants in their companies. Companies will continue to look at um, female economic uh, participants um, in a very narrow kind of um, point of view, and that will kind of uh, lead them to lose an opportunity for being able to use the, their technology and their ability to design um, economic universes uh, to suit their own bottom lines, but to also suit um, the requirements of women, which tend to, to be that women need flexible forms of work, right? And this has been observed across Europe and Asia. So the global North and the global South, women always need uh, particular kinds of flexibility in their work, not away from full employment, but in the, in their usage of time and in their ability to show up at particular times of the day outside their childcare and household responsibilities. So it would be a huge missed opportunity for just very basic gender disaggregated data to not be made available. In economies of the global south, like in India, where our public data systems um, have not been able to capture women's economic participation very well, 